All right, so today we're gonna to tie the two-bit hooker. This is a great pattern from Charlie Craven, one of my favorites from him, although he does have quite a few awesome patterns in different categories, all different categories. So to start out, I have my um, Umqua jig hook. We're doing a jig style today. This is the C403 BLJ, pretty similar to the 400 BL, but I think you just get a wider gape on this one. And what I've done is we have a 764 size bead for this size 14 jig hook, and then I added a 332nd size countersunk tungsten bead. This is the matte black from Firehole right behind it. So I think traditionally Charlie Craven uses the same side bead for both positions, and I just prefer on the jig style to go a little bit smaller to make sure that I maintain my hook gape when finished. So we started our thread and we're just gonna kinda build a little prop dam to keep those beads snug where we want them. And you'll see that that slotted bead has the rounder side of the opening towards the top, that's how you want it. And then we can work back and tie in our tailing material. So I'll go right to that bend and grab a feather off of my India Henbeck and use the black today. And we'll grab six or eight fibers, keeping the tips all lined up. And then we'll tie this in. We're gonna make sl a slightly stubby tail for this pattern. Not quite as long as what you might do on some of your other mayfly patterns. go for a stone fly as well. It's kind of an attractor pattern. But once we have that secured, we can work our way up back to the bead, kind of making it taper as we go, using that hen back to help build a slight body before we get up there and clip out the excess and cover up the rest, work on that taper just a little. And then we can work back and add our ribbing material. For that, it's just gonna be a little bit of thread today. I'm using the Viva 6 Ot White. Since this pattern's so dark overall, I like a nice light ribbing material. And I believe that's how Charlie Craven does it as well. If he's doing a lighter, lighter pattern, he'll do a dark ribbing and then a dark ribbing, or a dark pattern gets a light ribbing, just for that contrast. So we'll secure that in on the back, cover it up as we go forward. And make sure it's nice and secure there. And we can keep our white thread out of the way for now while we half hitch in preparation of ribbing the fly. Throw the purple over on the bobbin cradle get it out of the way and then I always spin my ribbing thread into a rope just to make sure that it's gonna stand out as best it can and then we'll go on forward and we can work on forward with our ribbing just some open wraps, trying to keep them even as we go. And we'll do four or five times here. Up to where that bead is. So we'll do a few more, five or six really. to where we'll capture it with our main tying thread. Purple in this case. And just make sure that that's nice and secure before you trim out the excess 
material. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is flip over the hook in the vise just to make it a little bit easier to work on the thorax region. Just like so. So the first thing that's gonna go in is a little bit of tinsel. This is the pearlescent tinsel. I'm using the wide size for this backing material. We'll just get that secured right on the bottom of the hook, which is really the top profile of our fly. And then we can trim out a little bit of that excess, but we will cover it up here in a moment anyhow. With a little bit of dubbing. So I'm going to use the UV Ista Black. Great, great, uh, I use this a lot really, but it matches well to this purple variation. And we're just going to create a little dubbing collar behind the beads. Covering up that material and then we can jump in front, add just a little more dubbing to in between the beads. This will help prop up our legs. Just like so. Alright, so now we're ready for the legs. And I'm going to use the same material that we used on the tail there, just a little bit of the India hen back. For that, I'm going to prep this feather. I'm just going to clip a little V in the tip. Just like so. And then all you have to do is take that and place it on either side of the hook shank, keeping everything even. And then we can capture that off. A couple of loose wraps, make sure it's where you want it. Play with the positioning and the lengths. And then if you have pull snug, this one's a little bit longer, there we go. Pull snug and give it just a couple of quick wraps there. And then I always pull mine up and over and just sneak one wrap right behind it before I go in to clip out all that excess material. Both sides. Just like so. I'm gonna do just a little more dubbing right over top of that. Super small noodle this time just to cover up some of that feather. Like so. And then we can pull our backing material right over the top. And secure that in place. Clip out our excess and then give it a couple turn whip finish here. Now from there, last thing we're gonna do this pattern Got a little bit of UV finish to it. So I'm going to flip it again in my vise. Just gives me a little more working area there to do this part. And so for that, I'm going to use the Solar S. This is the thin, hard formula along with a toothpick just to keep things moving around and then we'll cure it with our UV light here. So I always start with a little dab right on top. It can be pretty easy to get carried away with this stuff. 
So we'll start with a little on top and then I'm going to pull that down over the body and just give a nice light coating to all that thread. Sometimes I'll even just put it on my toothpick, a little bit on my toothpick to add as I go here. And just try to watch out for those legs. You want to try and avoid getting any of this into the leg material. I'm going to hit it once here real quick. And then I may come back in and add a little bit more just depending on the look I get. Whenever I'm working with the thin, sometimes I'll do a quick coating. Hit it because it will absorb into the dubbing materials and whatnot. Looks like that body worked out pretty good, but I'm going to add just a little bit more to the thorax. So again, make sure those legs aren't getting any of it in there. So just a little bit more right on top here. Smooth that transition, hit it once more. And there is your finished jigged purple variation of Charlie Craven's 2-Bit Hooker.